Hello, Chris and all, welcome back to the channel. Jimmy here, and spring has finally come to Scotland. Everything is fabulous, there's been sunshine, there's been warmth, and I decided it would be perfect for me to go outside and do some natural dyeing like a proper Viking on a campfire in my backyard. Natural dyeing is a hobby of mine. I've been doing it for years and years and years, using all kinds of natural pigments and plants and that sort of thing. So, here's how it went wrong. I decided I was going to use lichen dye. Lichen was very popular in the Viking Age to get pinks and purple shades, and also yellows and browns. It contains all kinds of different colours. Now, do not go out there and harvest a load of lichen. It takes centuries to grow. Some of it's protected by law. Please don't just go out there and grab a load of lichen. I was given my lichen by a conservator who works for a nature conservation charity here in the UK. Please don't go out and harvest all of that lichen that is just growing on walls. That is against the law in the UK anyway for most lichens, so please just be really careful. Okay? Okay. Good. Phew. PSA over. So the lichen I was using was a sort of bluey, greeny lichen called Evernia prunastri, and you actually have to ferment it, which makes it smell funky. So I'd left mine for about eight months in a jar of household ammonia, and it didn't smell great, not gonna lie. But then the time had come to use it in a dye bath. So what you actually have to do with this stuff, as you can see, is let it ferment, and then it gets this liquor that provides you with this really dark purpley brown. It's almost a deep purple, black night color. So I thought this was perfect. It's ready. It's it's amazing. All of the what do you call them tutorials and stuff online that I found said that once you have fermented it for like six to eight months in ammonia, let it breathe every couple of days. It'll get this amazing liquor, all of the colour will vanish from the actual lichen itself, and it's ready to use. Perfect. Okay. So, I thought I'd go out and do it in the back garden. So I went into our backyard, because I didn't want to stink up the place. It seriously reeks. Somebody over the road, chucking out this perfectly serviceable chair. So, uh, my chair now. Yeah. Our garden is like in the middle of me making it into a lovely medieval dye and medicine garden, so it's got all of this space around that's just some muddy, dead area. Now, you don't have to do this wearing World War II battle dress trousers. I recommend it. I did it proper Boy Scout style. I did everything by the book, all by the countryside code. I cleared away all of the brush. I made a little dent in the ground with a shovel. I put a little ring of stones around the outside of it and everything it was going to be perfect. Now, all you're meant to do with this stuff is treat it like any other natural dye liquor. You get the wool mordanted using a chemical to help the dye stick. And I used alum, that is potassium aluminium sulfate, which is very common. It's very commonly used in natural dyeing. You soak the wool in it, sometimes for an hour, sometimes overnight. Let it simmer a little bit in this alum. So I left it simmering in alum overnight. It cooled down by the next day, <clears throat> and it was all ready to go. It was absolutely perfect. Soaked it to about 15% concentration of alum. Then the time was right for me to stick it in its little fire. So, doing it properly, using a flint and steel and everything, I created a campfire. An actual, honest to God, real flint and steel campfire. Because I am a proper Viking and I have proper outdoor skills. Just like all those other real proper actual Viking YouTubers who are definitely Vikings and not just trying to sell crappy merchandise for that one shop that everybody asks me if it's authentic and it's not. So stop asking me if it's authentic, please. I really can't recommend it. Anyway, I made my campfire. I put my natural dye bath on it. Everything was going fluently. I got a lovely, lovely glowing fire underneath. It was a little bit wet because Scotland, but I got flames. I didn't get too much smoke. We got plenty of heat. Everything was going really nicely. The wool got up to temperature, so the time had come to add the liquor into the dye vat. I emptied my entire jar of fermented Avernia prunastri into the bath, and it went this incredible purple colour, a proper deep purple. It's all gone the water! 
and then left it to simmer. We got steam coming off the bath, it was nice and hot. All that was left to do was for me to sit in my brand spanking new garden chair, relaxing in my blunnies and my battle dress trousers. Then a hailstorm arrived. So for those of you who may live in tropical climes who don't actually know what hailstorms are, a hailstorm is basically when a lovely gentle spring rain or a lovely gentle late winter snowfall is coming down from the heavens and is about to bless you with this refreshing, cooling blanket. And then before it gets more than about 10 feet out of the cloud, Satan turns it into bullets. So, because Thor and Satan had decided I wasn't allowed to have a nice day out in the back garden, I came inside instead. Undefeated, undeterred, I left it to simmer on the gas hob for a full hour and a half, just to make up for it. When I lifted the lid off the hob, nothing had happened. The cloth was exactly the same colour as it had been when I put it in. It was almost like there hadn't been any dye in it. I tried agitating it, I tried testing the pH of the water, I tested the alum to make sure there was enough solution. Didn't work. Don't know why. If anybody has any ideas why, feel free to let me know. Needless to say, I wasn't best pleased, but I was damn sure I was going to have a day of natural dying. So I went to plan B, which was take some more wool, mordant that with 15% alum in water for an hour. Nice and warm, about 60, 70 degrees, not too hot so the wool doesn't shrink or get all funky. Then add about 15% madder pigment to the mix. Stick it in, give it a gentle stir, you don't want to felt it, and then let it simmer for an hour. This time, after an hour, it looked spot on, and I was quite pleased with myself. I had a little spinny to celebrate. After about an hour, I forgot that I'd left my camera recording, so here is some bonus footage of some Dow Egbert's gold coffee some Saint-Martin Pinot Noir, a bottle of Hobgoblin, Hobgoblin Ruby Red Ale, and just in the background, a packet of Scott's porridge oats, because there's oats and there's oats. The pink that I got was delightful. My hose are now a lovely dusky pink colour. They already had flecks of blue in them. I think I might over-dye them with woad to try and get them like properly purply coloured. You can't really tell in this footage here how pink they are, but in this footage you absolutely can, and I think that they look really really nice. As an added bonus, as well as the hose, I decided that I was going to dye something else. Now, if you remember, a couple of weeks ago I made myself some Viking mittens from some white, pure white dog blankets that I found in the charity shop. And now, they're pink! I got the cutest pink Viking mittens in the world! Aren't they adorable? So, I am undefeated, except by Avernia Prunastri, but I got my day of natural dying, and I think the lesson that we can all learn from this is natural dying is shite and miserable and depressing and disappointing, and no one should ever do it, and you should just throw Dylon into the washing machine with your clothes. But this is um this is about fifteen percent concentration of madder per hundred grams of wool. So 15 grams of matter for 100 grams of wool. And it's got this beautiful pink colour after an hour. It's very nice. It stayed fairly fast. I have managed to get pigment all over my flat. But natural dyeing is a great fun hobby. And if you guys are feeling like it is difficult and complicated and you'll get it wrong, yeah, sometimes it is and you will. I will. I do. And I've been doing this for years now. I know people who have been doing this for 30, 40 years, and they still don't always get the achieve, achieve the results that they want. It's natural dyeing. It's a natural product. It doesn't always work the way you want it to. And sometimes, as Jean-Luc Picard said,
you can do everything right and still lose. That's life. So, phrase of the week. Phrase of the week for this week uh, is going to be something a little bit different. And uh, because of the... Oh my god, I'm covered in pigment. Holy Moses. I've got madder in me tea. Because of the horrible weather that I was surprised by the other day, I've decided that we are going to learn a lovely Welsh idiom. Now, in English, you guys say raining cats and dogs, which makes no sense whatsoever. It doesn't rain cats and dogs. They don't fall out of the sky. In Welsh, we say buru hen wrecked a fin. Okay? Buru hen wrecked a fin. Which means pouring old ladies and sticks, which makes much more sense when you think about it. So, buru, pouring, hen, old, wrecked, women, a, and, fin, sticks. Buru, hen, wrecked, a, fin. It is pouring down. So there you go, guys. That is your Welsh phrase for this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed this, and I hope this has just given you a little bit of comfort, I suppose, that... Even if you have been doing natural dyeing and crafting like this for years and years, sometimes, sometimes Thor just says no, and that's absolutely fine. Thank you to everybody who has been sending me wonderful stuff to the P.O. Box recently. I just went and opened the P.O. Box. I'm going to do a little video of me opening some of the wonderful gifts that you've sent me, so thank you so much. That was an amazing surprise. I went and checked it the other day in the morning and was presented with this pile of stuff, and it was so, so cool. It was like an early birthday present, and it was just amazing to see that people wanted to send me such wonderful, lovely treats and gifts. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Tanatronissa. Till next time. Bye for now. Who will I'm a troll? Oh. oh, I have got madder in my tea. Oh my god. Will it dye my tea pink? No. <laughs>